Hello mate, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Let's Code 4, this time it's personal. In this episode we're going to add some more functionality to our game, so without further ado let's jump into it. So at the moment we've got a pretty functional game where we can click on a character, we can get an interaction going with them and then it will change our stats dependent on that interaction. So what I want to do is I'm going to, in my screens, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call this one topbar.rpy, like so. Then I'm going to create a new screen and I'm going to call it top bar. And we're going to give that a couple of curly braces. Now, what we want to do is create a frame and then we're going to create a style, same as we've done before. So I'm going to call this one style and this is going to be top bar underscore frame. So we want it to be aligned to the 0, 0.0. So we want it to start on the left hand side of the screen. We want it to be Y align 0, 0.0 as well. We also want it to be X size 1920 because that's the size of our screen. And we want our Y size to be, I'm gonna go with 50 first and let's see how that looks. And then what we're gonna do also, we're gonna come back to our contextual default, no, our contextual generic, and we're gonna copy these two statements. I'm gonna pop them in our top bar like so. And we're gonna change the padding on this one to two pixels because it's gonna be a very narrow bar. And if we have too much padding, the majority of the bar will be empty space. Now what we need to do is actually put some information in there. So inside our frame, the first thing I want to do is create an H box. And I'm going to put into there first things first. Let's just put in the time of day. So we actually need to remember in our defaults and defines what the time of day is. So we need to print time of day and then the time of day. So we'll copy that one. Come back in here. And then we can do text. And I'm doing it this way rather than putting it in square brackets just because we might want to do some extra stuff in this shortly. So we'll go with time of day and then time of day. Like so. And then we're going to put this into our main UI. So this one's going to be fairly close to the top as well. So we'll just say that there, top bar. Cool. And of course, we need to remember to put in our style prefix just up here as well. So we'll do that style underscore prefix. And then we'll put in brackets top bar like that. Remember to save that. And now when we run our game, you can see we've got a nice big top bar at the top there where we can put icons and things. It's got a background on it which matches the background for the rest of our UI so it doesn't look too out of place. And currently our time of day is situated on the left hand side in a default font so we can always change that. We've got these other fonts that we can play with. As we see before we've got the ability to change our locations there in our navbar. And what we can do is we can actually add that in there as well. So we could just control C, control V that and we could change this to our location a nice name so what we have to do is in our classes if I recall we have location int now we can get our location nice name string and that will just make life a little bit easier again so we're gonna say default a uh, define sorry location str global and then basically we just go copy all of this Then we can remove this enumerate bit because we don't actually need that this time. For Q in locations, if location equals Q dot name, uh, int to return equals I, we don't need to do that. We can just say str to return. This is just so that we don't. str to return equals Q dot nice name that paste that there and then we'll just double check that we've actually spelled that correctly or rather got that the right way around with our capitalization place nice name small n big n cool so we're good there 
So we can just tidy this up a little bit. That looks a bit messy, right? Save that. So now we can come back to our top bar and we can pop a statement inside here that just says uh, location text equals, remembering to put a pound sign at the beginning of it or a dollar sign, sorry. And then we just copy that into there. And let's just make a default value for that just in case something goes hideously wrong. Put that up here next to location. Empty string, save it. Cool. Okay, so now we can have a look and see what that looks like. As you can see when we test that now it says morning and then it says our location. And if I change our location by clicking in there, my kitchen, my bedroom, bathroom, living room. Okay, so that's working. We just need to format this to make it look a little bit prettier now. So what I'm gonna do in the code is I'm actually gonna remove the H box because we, we don't always need to have a container like an H box. It's sometimes more beneficial not to. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put our time uh, at X align. I'm gonna go with, uh, where do we want our time to be? I'm gonna put that as 0 0.03 and I'm gonna put our location to 0.5. I'm remembering to save that, of course. Now we look at our game, and as you can see now, it's formatted a little bit better. We can change the fonts as well to make it look nicer. But now we've got our top bar, which tells us it's morning. We are in my house. So things are slowly starting to come together. So if we were to click on this and then we were to talk, we can just check that that's actually working. So now it's lunchtime. We've got less energy. We're still in my house. That's cool. So we know that's now functioning how we want it to function. So we can now change our location and then we've got our top bar here. We could also have a player cache stat or something like that up here. But more importantly, we can also have other icons such as toggling music or help and things like that. They can be quite useful as well. Another error that came up just during testing of that little bit of code was located in our script file. And because when we change location, our selected is set back to minus one, what's happening is when it's minus one, it's doing this check. And of course, the lists can't have minus indices and that's causing a crash, which is a bit of a problem. So we need to change this statement slightly or change the way that we check this. So we also need to say if selected is not equal to minus one, so if it's not already been reset, then do this check. Otherwise, we uh, we want to do that. And we could actually say if it's not within the range of zero to the length of the uh, the list, but we we'll just leave it like that for now because all we're really doing the only time we ever set it to a minus number is when we're resetting it, and um, we want that to stay that way so now that that's there that error is now fixed and sorted so another bit of debugging that we've located and resolved so also whilst i was debugging that what i've also done is change the font here in the style so as you can see it looks a bit smaller and all i've done is i've created a another style called top bar underscore text and i've assigned one of the fonts that i've got installed set it with a size and a y location and obviously turned bold off and now that looks a lot better so the next thing I wanted to start tackling in this video is one of the things that we've got in our planning list here and that's the ability to run a narrative alongside everything else which we currently don't have the ability to do so we're gonna just go to our defines and defaults and what we're gonna do I'm gonna set a default and we're gonna call this one chapter now if you want to run multiple storylines alongside you can basically do the same thing uh, if you visit let's code season three then there's that's basically how the entire game is built but we're just adding it in in this in this game as a, a little bit of a side bo bonus basically so chapter and we're going to say chapter equals zero to start off with now we're going to have to create a new folder inside our game and we're going to put it inside scripts we're going to 
create a new folder. I'm mean, going to call this one uh, story. Did I create a new file? Yes, I have. There we go. And inside story, we're going to create a new file and we're just going to call this one 0.rpy because that's what it is. So now we need to decide on a naming convention for our labels. If you remember from Let's Code 3, if you watched it, we actually used label names as a way of navigating through our game. And we're going to do the same thing here. So the first thing we have to do is give it a label. And what we want to be able to do is interchange these things so that we can include certain details or omit them depending on what the storyline requires for this particular part of the chapter. So what I want to do actually is just come into here and I'm going to comment. So what we are going to want is the location. We're going to want time of day. We're also going to want uh, is the character present or a character name. We also want a chapter number. So we've got location, time of day, character, chapter number. I think those things are probably all of the things that we really want to check. So now we need to create a uh, function which is going to check all of these things. So we also need to go back into our defaults and defines. And underneath the chapter, we need to call uh, arc label equals. And that's going to be an empty string. Now what we want to do is come into our classes and we're going to define a new function. And we're going to call this arc check. And then we will just leave that empty. We don't need to. We could put a, a variable in there, but there doesn't seem to be much point because we've only got one chapter or one story arc going on at any given time. So now we need to get our global variables. So we've got global. So the first thing we need from our globals is we also need arc label. We also need location. We also need NPCs. We also need our chapter number, which is, uh, come back to our defaults and defines, chapter with a small c. What else do we need? Let's come back to our 0 to RPY, time of day. There we go. Time of day, like that. And um, we could actually put time of day, the string in there only to make creating labels a little bit easier. So let's go with a capital T on that one. And we'll access the integer variable as well, just in case. Cool, so that's all the globals we need for this one. So what we need to do now is check all of these things to see various different com combinations. So the first thing we'll say is just arc label equals an empty string because we need to make sure that, that happens every time we check and it just makes more sense to do it in here rather than in our script and i don't know why it's insisting on on tabbing in by one space there. that's very strange right get rid of all that extra gump there we go so we need to create a series of strings now so we're going to say uh, label check no we can't do that that's a keyword so we'll just put tech in there We'll just put check text a equals, and now we're going to put, uh, just starting off with, actually, we are, we're going to do this in reverse order. So we're going to start off by checking everything first. So the first thing we need to do is, I believe that's it. Dot format. So we need. Let's have a look at our 0.rpy location at time of day character. I'm going to put the chapter number at the beginning. So we're going to say chapter. Then we're going to say uh, location. Then we're going to say time of day. And then we're going to say, right, now we need to add. So what we're going to put into here is I think what we're going to do is the if it requires a character to be present in the room i think we're going to have it so that you actually have to physically click on them in order to activate the um story arc for them so we're actually going to go with selected so remind me of this one that's false who is selected is nice name uh 
I think we're probably going to be better off going with just name because nice name has spaces in it and that's going to mess things up. So we're actually going to go with who selected there. So who selected? Cool. And then that's just that just saves us the, the problem of having to rotate through all of the characters and check if they're in the room and marry it up. It's just easier just to say if they're in the room and they're required to be part of the storyline, then you have to click on the character. It's fine. Cool. So that's our first combination. Let's copy that and paste it. Now we're going to say B. We're going to have quite a lot of different variations of these words. So we might as well get comfy in this situation. So right, check B. This time I'm going to remove the character from our label name, like so. Then I'm going to go again. This time we're going to, oh, okay. So that didn't work. Let's just undo that. I need to paste that in there. Cool, right now, so C is going to be with the character and the time of day removed. Like so. Then we're gonna go Control C, Control V. This time we're gonna remove the location. Right, this is where we're gonna run into an error at the moment because we need to append or prepend with a some kind of text because the chapter you can't start a label name with an integer basically so i'm glad i caught that now so what we'll do is we'll actually just put arc underscore at the beginning of each one of these like so and then we aren't going to run into that problem so i'm glad i spotted that when i did because that would have just been a silly mistake to make a what a mistake to make cool so what I want to do now is just have it so that you can select a person. So we'll grab this and we'll pop that there. So E, we're gonna remove the location and the time of day from the equation because there are probably gonna be occasions, particularly during something like an introduction or a tutorial or something where you have to select a specific person, but their location doesn't necessarily matter. In fact, arguably, that's probably one of my biggest bugbears about certain games. Um, even large, well-known AAA MMOs is where you have to select a specific character in the exact right location at the exact right time of day, and that's just a real pain in the bum. So we're going to add a, a check to make sure that that isn't. So what we need to do is remove these. So we've got location, time of day. I'm pretty happy with those five combinations. I think if we go too mad, we could have every single combination, but because we've got four properties, there's that there's 16 total potential combinations, and I just think that's just going to get messy. So um, I think it's 16 anyway. I can't be bothered to do the maths off the top of my head. Right, so now we need to check these in order to see if there is actually a label that matches these things. So we need to say if rempi dot has underscore label check text a then we need to return check text a copy and paste that several times and we're doing it in the correct order so v like so otherwise we're going to return none so we say check text b c d d cool and uh, no that was oh, it's e sorry stand corrected swap that with e so i'm being a bonehead right cool so let's just add a space in there so that we can see what's going on so we're creating these lab these these wordy labels and then we're checking to see if there is actually a label with that name then we're going to return that value that text value as our result then all we have to do is in our i mean we could do a call from here to be honest it wouldn't be the end of the world in fact should we do that yeah let's give it a go and then if it doesn't work out that it is useful in this in in this instance 
then we can always change it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new variable up the top here. In fact, we don't need to. We've already got arc label. So we can actually change this to say arc label equals check text A. Stick that there. Check text B. Stick that there. Check text C. D. And E. And now we need to put an if statement in if uh, arc label is not equal to an empty string because these are all conditions if if it matches any of these then assign that value to it but there it might also not match any of these and therefore be an empty string then we can say rempy.call arc label and then otherwise it's going to return at none so that's cool and then we can just pop this into our game loop so we'll say is before we call the UI, we're going to run this function and hopefully it won't crash. So when we test the game, currently it's not crashing, which is a very good sign. But because we don't currently have a label that matches our uh, naming convention, we're not going to see anything anyway. So what we want to do is uh, create one. We go into here and we're going to create a new label. I'm just going to call this one arc underscore zero. So this is going to hopefully kick off as soon as we start our game. So I'm going to just I'm going to tab that in so that it stops messing up my tabbing. And we're just going to say this is intro label for narrative. Like so. And then I'm going to create another new file, which I've already created here. I'm going to call this one label zero arc underscore zero underscore Sally. So this one's going to happen when we click on Sally. In fact, I'm going to change this to one. And, uh, and that's because we want this to be in the next chapter. So label arc one Sally. And then we're going to put this text is part of narrative where Sally is the key. Return. So that's that. What I need to do now is come into classes and we're going to create yet another function. This time it's going to be called next. Next with an E, not an A. Global. Global. Come on. There we go. Global. Uh, chapter. And then we're going to say chapter plus equals one. And that's it. That's fine. That's all we need to do. The only reason I'm doing this is to make it easier for if if I was writing this engine for somebody else, it's just easier to tell them to use the next command rather than something else. So we'll just copy that and we're going to go into this one and we're going to call this function at the end of the label so that it appends our uh, chapter. It adds increases the chapter to one, meaning that you'll get the intro then you'll get the ability to click on Sally. And if you click on her, then it will show you this text. But you've got to remember to also then append chapter again. Otherwise, you'll just be able to keep clicking on her and getting the same bit of story arc over and over again. So this time when we run our code, we hit start. And it comes up with this is the intro label for the narrative. So it's calling exactly the right label we want it to call. Then it's jumping into the game. I know the window's still there. We're going to fix that in a minute. And then when we actually click on Sally, this text is part of the narrative where Sally is the key. And then it jumps into our main UI and the abilities to carry out actions are still there. And if we click on her, it doesn't jump back into it because now chapter is two and we don't have a label where chapter is two. So this window thing is starting to become a bit of a pain in the bum. So I think what we're going to do is every time we call our UI, we need to really hide this. So what I'm going to do is at the start of our game loop, just after it says while playing, I'm going to input the command window, hide, save that. And now when we run our code, we get our little intro narrative and lo and behold, the window doesn't appear. If we click on it again, there you go. It remains hidden. So that's cool. Awesome. So I think that about wraps it up for this video, guys. We've got our 
sort of building blocks are now are really starting to come together. We're almost at the end of this series now. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you found it useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.